going? Okay, cool. All right, we are live again. Uh, Ralph Havens here, Don Lay, and um, Miracles, Magic, and Coffee. So I was so excited to do this again um, as soon as I could after hanging out with Don last week. So we're, we're doing it. And um, I've got a lot of questions. And so um, what you guys can do too is if you're watching it live, type in a question for Don in the, um, in the chat area and we'll get to as many as we can. And um, if you have other questions later, put them into the chat box anyway, the message box, and we'll look at them. So um, yeah, we had a big response last time. I think well over 500 people or at least 480 something the last time I checked a few days ago. So that was cool. A lot of people watched it and, and saw some, some stuff they liked. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my questions here. So welcome, Don. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. <clears throat> Cool. And we're going to look at um, we're going to look at um, ways that you can interact with Don more if you want. As much as I'd like to, to do this together, um, it'll be cool to have ways for you guys to, to hook up with Don. So, um, so I'm going to look through some of my questions because I've been writing them down since last week. I think I'll start with this one because it's just cool. So, um, so let's see. So just to review, if you haven't seen the first one, Don um, had a near-death experience quite a few years ago um, riding his motorcycle, it crashed, and, and was in a coma for a while. And, um, and while he was on the other side, he had some big epiphanies and saw some stuff. And there's the first video you can find. I'll link to it. And you can go listen to the, the first interview I had with him a week ago. Pretty cool to hear what's going on on the other side. So, um, so I kept having more and more questions. And so I wanted to just start with them. So I'll, I'll kind of draw to this one that I wrote down. You know, you were, um, you were, you had an experience where you, you basically died and rung and then came back. And now that you've come back, do you have any, I'm just gonna say the way I wrote it down. Do you have any superpowers now that, you, <laughs> now that you've been over there? Like, can you do stuff now, like create realities or do things or read minds or know the truth or like do you have any superpowers now that you're back do you mean other than leaping tall buildings in a single bound well i've seen you do that <laughs> yeah that's that's disturbing to a lot of people i know <laughs> you know it it's what it was for me and continues to be was more about <clears throat> the experience of tuning in to who you really are on a much broader level and a much uh, beyond just body personality and how you how we've all been trained to relate to ourselves with that experience it was like being totally separated from the body and being in a space that um, has been related to or referred to as spiritual and and it is but it's not in the way most people think of being spiritual. Um, and, and the biggest things about that, I think for me, were, first of all, the, it was what's called just a field of love. And the problem I have with that is most people don't understand what love is, even vaguely. Um, <clears throat> And the, the second is that there was absolutely, unquestionably, no judgment whatsoever. Cool, hang and, on a second. Because um, I know you did like 50 years of work in the spiritual world and had a big center in Vancouver, BC before all this yeah. and, um, and had a lot of shifts around all sorts of things. So you had a lot of experience and training and work in all sorts of things that could be called letting go of judgment and, and love. When you think of it now, was it different than what you had when you studied all those years with what love was like? Because you had a lot of training. Yeah, and it was um, essentially what it did was just took it all to another level for me, lack of a better way of putting that. And <clears throat> I think of it as um, all the things that I had tasted, all the things that I had touched through all the years of working with people, um, it just sort of grounded it all and made it much more real. I mean, so it was kind of in the same ideas, just yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. It's just sort of expanded those. Um, it it made my, I guess you could say it made my universe a whole lot bigger. We've we we operate from whatever universe we're operating from. In our mind, we've got this, you know, and we're in a in a sort of a box, and so it just pushed the edges of the box, the walls of the box, out enormously. Okay. And, and with, with that, yeah. did, did you get any extra powers? Like, did it help you do stuff? My The healing work that I've been doing all, over all this time changed. Oh, it did? Yeah. And it's like, and I, I again, how do you describe this? It's, it's an energetic phenomenon. I found myself relating to it from a different place. I found it, it was expanded. That's about all I can say about that. And, and so the potency of it um, seems like that's expanded as well. You know, I, the feedback that I've gotten from people that I've worked with. Um, and, it, and it sort of, it, when I think about this, it takes it back to some of the basic premises that I was had learned and was operating from originally, which is, <clears throat> to put it very simply, you've got so many capabilities that you have no idea that you even possess. Okay, yeah, I'm interested in that. <laughs> yeah, and and how do you how do you take another step with those? And the way that we're taught, the way that we're brought up, <clears throat> is you got to understand everything. You know, you know, understand it before you, you know, blah, 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 think before you act and all that sort of thing. And this is getting into a realm to where you're touching and accessing a part of yourself that you totally don't understand. And you can't. You need to go there and experience it first before you can have it be real for your body. Okay. And... And then it's getting the body to adjust to that different sort of state of being to where it's not thinking all the time. Nothing wrong with thinking. Right. It has its place. But when we start, you know, poking into these other realms where the real magic is, uh, maybe that's why we call it magic, because we don't understand it. Right. Yeah. So, so, um, so, so you went there for lack of a better words and um and then you came back and now you've got this um this awareness of how to um be instead of having to like um have to figure it out and, and do it and it's all expanded for you and so um so now can you use how does how do you how does what you do um um can 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 people that haven't been where you've been <clears throat> on the other side like that and back can they learn how to be or learn how to do what you're doing or learn how to like access what you're accessing you know for me that's that's um um Yes, they can. Good. <laughs> and they don't have to go where I went. They don't have to go out and crash on Harley or something. Um what it what it really comes down to is simply trust. How much do you trust yourself, and how much do you trust that you can access information or whatever that you've got on different levels that you're not even aware of? We're only aware. You know, I I love the way I heard somebody put this recently was, yeah, you only know what you know. You don't even know what it is that you don't know because, you know, it, it's like that. And we get caught in this. It needs to be for more. I know when I watch you working sometimes, when I've seen you doing that, it's like um, you get hits. It is le that's, that's what, I was what ask it you. seems like, like. Is that how you get it? You like scan something catches your attention and it's like there's information in that sign or information in that person that just walked by or is that... Yeah, very, very similar to that. Um, it manifests perhaps a little differently through, through me because than it does through you because we've had different trainings, but it doesn't mean 
that one's better than the other or anything else. It's simply my manifestation of what I came in to do in this lifetime and, and play with and, and get anchored into this reality. And I look at it as every single person <clears throat> um, on the planet, it's like they're, they're all unique pieces and unique expressions, if you will, you know, and that could be interpreted as expressions of God or expressions of the source or whatever words you want to use. We've all got our uniqueness. And if we can really be with that on a very deep level and set aside all the invalidations that we've gotten in our lives and all the proofs that we get confronted with all of our lives and all the battles that we've been uh, sort of programmed in some ways that we got to take on and, you know, again, prove. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, then we got concepts that are starting and are in, entering into this, which um, I think are key. And I call them spirit killers. Okay. <laughs> because I was going to ask you, how do you, how do you, um, like trust? Like I, I'm sort of getting. I, part of what I strive for and what I'm doing with what I do is to, um, to trust and absolutely let go, yet still do stuff, but to trust. And um, so yeah. So what are the spirit killers? Like how, can, how do you, how, what would stop you from doing that? And how can you actually? How can? What do you have to say to somebody that's like, what do you mean trust? Like how do I trust myself? Like. What is yeah. Yeah. It's tr trusting those little hits that you get. And it's like the clearer we get with, uh, and it's one of the advantages of meditation is in most meditations, the um, one of the very first things that you is brought up is being able to quiet the mind. Okay. In other words, getting out of that intellectual chatter, 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 which again has... Uh, a very useful applications in certain parts of our lives. But when we start to uh, tap into those parts of ourselves that are in other dimensions, shall we say, or different levels of ourselves, um, uh, that analyzer, the thinking part of us, doesn't really compute. It's like allowing ourselves to have the experience before we expect ourselves to understand the ex understanding right. is going to come from the later. experience. It's not the other way around. Got it. And so, so I've got a question this morning um, or last this morning or last night, I got, um, I, I, I'm scheduled to go look at a car um, to buy. Yeah. And so I've, I've got this appointment with this guy that's going to sell a car. And, um, and then I went to put it on my calendar and it wouldn't save it. Like I clicked save and it was like, went away. So I did it again, went away, did it again, poof, went away. And so my wife and I are like, are you supposed to go see this car? Is it like not a good car? Or are you going to get a client that absolutely needs the five o'clock spot? So I thought, well, I'll leave it off the schedule for now. And I'll just see if somebody schedules in or what happens. And so this morning I got a message from one of my clients that she wanted that five o'clock spot. But I see her quite often and I'm, you know, I know that she can move around, so I checked in to see if she wants to move around to a different time. But now I'm kind of thinking, and I have ways to like test it and see: Do I do this? Do I do that? Um, anything you can tell us to like how to trust these hits? Like, how do you know? Okay, I, I feel this is a hit. I'm getting this information. And I'm drawn to it. How do you know what to do with it? Or <laughs> like, like in my case, for example, you know, is this like don't go buy the car? Is this? Um, um, this is the client that was supposed to take the five o'clock. Um, is, is there other information that I'm not aware of? Um, you know, can you use what you're talking about, like not using the intellect, but use this trust space? Um, can you use it in real world stuff? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. And I think it, it's, it's that sort of gut level feeling. Something feels really right for me and appropriate. And I start to move in that direction. Oh, and, start to move in that direction. Got yeah, it. whatever that direction is, and do I trust that? And yeah, there's 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 things that can come up or blockages, or those may be my own. They may be oh, you know, coming from somebody around me, and I don't even care if I understand all that. But you're moving in a certain direction. Yeah, and but I'm not forcing it. 
and you're not I'm staying not rigid to, to stay in that, that no. spot. Oh, it's the everything. The, to me, everything is totally fluid. So it's not like, um, oh, this is um, maybe not a good car for me, and no matter what happens now, I got the hit that it's a bad car. It's like I just aware that I'm moving in a direction of okay there's something going on here and kind of like you're in a boat in the rapids or something and it's like yeah yeah and not having to have all the answers at once again I don't need to understand it all I need to trust what's happening here on a greater level and the, mm -hmm. again the clearer I get with myself then the more obvious it becomes you know yeah yeah but it's like getting all the clutter that's tried to define me yeah. all of my life, getting that out of the way so I can hit a, you know, lack of a better word, hit a sort of a purity of myself. Yeah, yeah. I got a, another story that kind of, I've got to see what you think of this one. So I, my wife and I were in Kitsilano Beach in Vancouver right. this, this weekend and um, at our favorite pizza place and um, <laughs> Rocky Mountain Flatbread <laughs> and, and um, Kitsilano. And so um, I was told to go have babies and live in Kitsilano on my wedding day by the Kitsilano server because they served our, our pizza at our wedding and um, reception. So right. it's like we have a connection for years there. And so we put our money in the meter because they're really strict about meters in Vancouver. And we set the timer an hour and 20 minutes, um, the meter would be done. So we're in the, the pizza place and and um, um, the we just were finishing up our pizza, gluten-free and, and um, before the server came back to ask us for dessert, we were thinking, you know, my, I know my friend loves dessert, my friend we were visiting, and <clears throat> this other woman comes up and says, hey, we need your table, there's another table that has a reserved table, you guys have to start to clear out. And we're like, whoa. And you know, it kind of took us by surprise because they're so nice there. So so, um, so we kind of, you know, the server came later and said, hey, you guys ready for dessert? And my friend was like, well, we've been asked to leave. So so, um, so we went, um, we went, um, we left, and we realized, oh my God, we're eight minutes late. We might have a ticket. And so we went and we didn't have a ticket. So we put in more money and we walked around town a little bit. And, um, and then I thought, I'm going to send an email to them because I want them to know that, you know, so that, because it's a great place and I want to make sure they know what their employee did. And right. so she emailed back and she goes, oh, well, I'll, I'll pay for part of your dinner next time. And um, that person just was new, was getting trained up. Um, thanks for the message. And later I thought, huh, I think that that was our angel telling us, hey, your meter is about to expire. Get out there and put money in it. And plus, I'm going to give you dinner for this. Is, yeah. that, is, tell, is that, was that anything to do with what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly could. And, and, and again, there's, you know, there's a concept that, that's been floating out there for years about uh, going with the flow. And, and it's like, yeah, okay. And that, that yep. you know, those things get twisted a little bit and not, you know, that means you just sit back and don't do anything yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's like just paying attention to the cues that are coming in. So and, it doesn't and, mean, that's another question that I, I want to just put out before I forget, like um, that a lot of the spiritual traditions, people tend to like just um, sit on their chairs and, and meditate <laughs> and they don't do anything to get ahead in the world. So you're just going with the flow isn't about just like waiting for it to, to just magically appear? That's the way that I see it. No, it's not about just waiting for something to appear. It's like letting it appear in the course of things. Let's put in it the that way. And it's like, I need to keep, um, I need to keep living. I think, it, you know, one of the things that I, um, it comes up for me around the whole idea of spirituality. Oh, you're such a spiritual person, which for most people, that's going to say, oh, you, 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 when I look at you, you're sort of like floating around or, yeah. <laughs> or you know, the, the images that we, we've got of what a saint is, you know, you, you see my halo today um, or whatever it happens to be. And for me, it's more about, it's like, I'm being real. I'm being in a real. body. I am a being. I am a. I am a spiritual entity, shall we say, operating in a body. And if my body can't be real, what am I doing here? That's the so idea, good. Yeah, it's about manifesting this other part of me here. The more real that is for me, then the more real it is that I'm present. 
don't. So your version of what you really are, do that. Even Say again? Your yes. version of what you really are, do that. Like, don't, even if it's not like um, spiritual-ish. Yeah. And it, it doesn't mean being real. Oh, I'm, I'm a really pissed off person for whatever reason. Yeah, I've yeah. been treated rough all my life. So I'm going to be real. I'm going to run just <laughs> yeah, yeah, angry yeah. as hell. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, you came here to learn something. You're going through your own process. And maybe you need to learn to get over your anger. I mean, and, and this starts coming back into what I was mentioning earlier about the spirit killers. Two, two major ones for me. When I talk about spiritual killers, I'm talking about killing our spiritual awareness of ourselves, who we are on this bigger level. Okay. One is uh, competition. Because if I'm competing with you, then I'm saying, hey, look at me. I'm a better Ralph than Ralph is. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, is just the height of absurdity <laughs> uh, to me. And and uh, the other one, if I can remember what it is, it was here just a minute ago. <laughs> but it, it's like the... the um, <clears throat> well... In the there, there's I think of different sort of brands of competition, and, and it's if I'm looking at somebody else, and I think oh they've got all the answers, and then I start trying to be like them, oh. I just I just lost track of myself. Oh, okay. And the judgment that was the the other big killer is judgment. And it usually comes from from there because deep down in like they're better, they're worse, they're yeah, yeah, and it, or they're not worth a shit, you know. And are and there up here? They're a guru to you, or something. yeah, yeah. Then they're oh, you know, this this is this stair step to God or something. Yeah. And it's like we've all got all we need um, within us. We are that. I guess from, from the, you know, near death perspective, sitting there in that dimension or space or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> for the time that I was, was there. Um, there was, you know, like I said, absolutely no judgment. There was, there was, there was, it was just simply acceptance of everything and of everybody you and know, so and should we have that, that here or because then um what about um acceptance of things but yet you, you still should like try to do things or make things happen are we supposed to be like just acceptance of all things well you think it's it, 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 that the interesting part of this little <laughs> phenomenon of being in a body is we're trying to balance out two different dimensions mm. you know we've got shall we say um, you know the words are so limited but we shall i say there's a dimension of me that's more uh, broader than what my brain can think or comprehend and um and so how do you combine in some ways, if, yeah, if you, you want to look at that? it strictly on sort of an esoteric level or something like that, you're looking at a spiritual entity, shall we say, coming into physical form. Now, physical form operates at this particular time, at least, operates within a dichotomized, shall we say, reality. There's left, there's right, there's up, there's down, there's, you know, all the different. And then so we take that even further and we say good and bad and we say right and wrong. And it's like, so we've compartmentalized, compartmentalized, compartmentalized every reality into all these different boxes. And, and then you've got uh, I mean, if you want to take that another step, then you've got, okay, we've got science and we've got uh, religion. You know, they'll never come together. And it's like, well, maybe not, but it's like they're trying to at this time. The spirituality, science is very much in communication with each other. At least it's starting to open up. You know, you can find psychologists that are talking to spiritualists that are talking to you know, um, <clears throat> whatever. I mean, it's it's like that opening this up to where 
everything is trying to point at the same thing. Anything that's expanding is trying to include more than what it knows it is. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you, I mean, sort of. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. can, can you, I mean, I'm just like spinning around like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But then I, I was thinking, okay, um, I, can, can you, I'll just bring it like <laughs> something um, real basic for people because a lot of people are like, they want better health or they want more money or they want to live in a different place or they want a boyfriend or they want a, um, a the relationship to be better. Um, can you make your life better? Can you make your life better since being in your near-death experience and coming back? Can, um, can you, uh, like, or is it better? Or, or do you have any recommendations for people that are looking for something? Um, they're searching for something, and they're here physically, and some of them really want some different things in this real, realish, real world. Yeah. Can you make things better? Um, if you offer any insights into how you might use this whole expanded self thing or or whatever that is, or is that something to ask? I mean, well, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot of questions. <laughs> you don't even know, man. We'll have an episode three, four. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it's like what you started to, to me, what you started addressing there is, you know, what is it that we want for ourselves? <clears throat> and if you, if you, Take it down to a core level. Oh, I want a bigger car. I want a, a blah, blah, blah. And I want this and blah, you know, whatever it happens to be. And usually we're talking about material kind of things. But when you get right down to it, what most people really want, and even if they're in denial of it, they probably haven't gotten it, which is just that... Um, well, it struck me when in that near death experience was, oh, I'm home. Okay. You know, and I've heard, heard, had people say this to me time and time and time again over the years. I just want to go back home. You know, whatever that's what the, it's all about, that huh? means wanting the, the, the money or the, the relationship or the. Right. The, well, the, and, it, and, it's, and the, it's that space that. I can't call it really anything other than love. All acceptance, you know. Oh, right. And and part of that is, um, I've got some stories about that with people. But it, it, tell it's, a story because I I got a little story of a um, someone who um, I won't go too deep with the specifics just to keep it anonymous. But um, a little boy that got to go hang out with his grandparents in a faraway state, uh, and over there he's treated like a god. And just love his, all of his family's there, and um, but mom and dad are in a different place, and so he was really um, upset about having to come home because he feels more home there, where he's like treated like a really amazing being, even though his parents treat him really well. Yeah. But it's like he had such a big group of family at this other place. Yeah. Um, What's your story? Um, in the in the office space that we had in our center. <clears throat> um, my office was back in a corner somewhere and, <clears throat> and there's a reception desk and every once in a while I'd be out there at that reception desk and um, talking with the receptionist or something about something and, and maybe the, the door would open somebody would walk in. And I had sort of geared myself over time. This took place to where when I looked at somebody, I wasn't really looking at their body. I was looking at them, you know, on that bigger level. And every once in a while, I had to have somebody walk in their door, and we had a couch sitting right beside the front door. And I'd just turn around, and I'd say hello to them. But I was saying hello to them as something more than their body, as this other you know, dimension. What they really are, yeah. yeah. And the number of people over the years that when I do that, they'd collapse on the couch and just weeping. And it was like that, it's like what they had been looking for all their lives. So can, can you recognition help us of um, um, feel that or help us um, be able to see that in others? Like any pointers or can you do that now? Or, or like, well, how can people um, um, either see people in that way or feel that way? 
Is there well, a way to do that here and now for, for people listening? Yeah, I don't know how far we can take any of this over. Yeah. Us, but <laughs> <laughs> we played no, with that a little bit last yeah, time. Yeah. And, and, well, it's, you know, I don't know I mean, how well It's that an works. experience that I, when I hear it, I'm like, oh, my God, I'll take that. Yeah. And, uh, and oh, my yeah. God, can I do that? <laughs> yeah, and of course we can. And, and it's, again, what I refer to as the spirit killer. You know, how can I see somebody like that? When I look at them, you know, and I just see them physically, and it's like, oh, they got their hair done wrong. Oh, they're overweight. Oh, they're too scared. You know, all the judgments. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't see those. So, the, to me, the best place to start is just being aware of how much we're in judgment, oh, and just gotcha. start to see if you can go past that. I remember one t- an Notice exercise. Notice when you're judging. Notice yeah. when you're judging. I remember a, a thing that I I went through. Oh God, this was 50 years ago, about the time I started this. And um, I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to play a little bit with every time I look at somebody and I see something I don't like, um, see if I can find something that I do like. And every time I see something in somebody... Um, you know, the reverse of that. Something you like? Yeah, if I really like somebody, then looking at if there's anything that I really don't like about them. Oh, See if I can also find go back and forth. Oh, yes, go back and oh. forth. And it was like the, the words that came up for me with that thought was... Um, I like it. Thus you know everybody's equal. You know, it was leading to a place, and it, it's, you know, there's the judgments of, in so there. So kind of, of watching yourself judge them instead of judging them. Yeah, and also being gentle with ourselves. If there's anything I came out of that near-death experience for, this relates back to something you asked earlier, was um, lighten up. Yeah, let me say, and, don't be the pettiness. Yeah, lighten and up. getting out of the pettiness and, uh, and, and being able, you know, giving ourselves permission to... Is this still working? Yeah, it's still working. Okay. I'm just looking through my questions. Yeah, it's, as far as I know, it's still working. I'm going to pull this up and just look and see. Oh, yeah, we're still on. Where are you? Yeah, you're right there, right? Yep, there you are. I don't know. Am I here? Yeah, I'm going to make sure you're, you've got your full screen there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at my question. Whoa, how come that doesn't go up? Yeah. There we go. Okay. So how do I... How do I uh, how do I be gentle with myself? And you're asking about the, you know, the power and all that sort of thing, or you can do do super normal things now and all that sort of thing. And it, it's, it's, it's like, well, let's put it this way: I'm happier than I've ever I've ever been in my life, and that's pretty super. To me. That's pretty good. I mean, I don't, you know, the, there's there's that place of when you. Quit trying to adjust yourself into something that you're trying to see, that you see out there that you think you want to be. And it's like, let what you want come from a deeper level than that's, just that's my, this That's thinking. perfect. Part. So that, that, thanks. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, so leads me to this question. Do you have the same goals or do you have different goals or do you have goals now since coming back? <laughs> well, let's put. Uh, I guess if if I um, thought in terms of goals, I guess my goal at this point would be to live life. That's live cool. life. You know, it's to like, really live like to be real with life, and can I find uh, the beauty in it? You know, I walk out in the trees. The trees look different than they did before. And I've always been tuned into nature all yeah. my life. Yeah. And part of it, <laughs> yeah. And part of it goes back to that. There's that biblical something or other that says, be as a little child. So live life, be as a little child. Well, it's going back. It's realizing what I was tapped into when I was three or four years old, because I came in with that. That's just what a, I came this in This is a really with. cool one. Live life. Be as a child. Yeah. Really yeah. live life. Be as a child. So so I've got a question, a couple of questions then. Um, would you call that um, having that home or heaven or the 
the other side um, here in the here and now thing? Let's just say that it's all here and now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the task is to get by all the mental constructs oh, that, like that we've not. got that make it seem like it's not. So do you, yeah. do you, do you look forward to going back then if it's... If well, I well, you know, oddly, last week you mentioned something about watching that bird die. Yeah, yeah. and you know, I've had the opportunity to sit pe sit through the death process with a number of people, and it's like to me now, with you know, I knew this before, but it just got more anchored in terms of this is just a transition point. I, I am who I am, and now I happen to be in this physical body. I was born into this body. The body was born. I came into it. Let's kind of look at it that way. And eventually, this body's going to die, and I'm going to go away from it. But the I remains con constant, okay? Yeah. And then, to, to make things really strange, we celebrate births. Yeah. And we mourn that. Give me a break. I mean, these are huge, um, uh, sacred. I think of a birth as a sacred thing. And I think of death as the same way. And the pe people that I've experienced with that, it's magical. It's, yeah. Know, so it's shifting our beliefs. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and yet, I don't know if this is true. I've been told this. So I'm, I should look this up a little bit more. But when um, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, mm -hmm. I heard you know everybody was like all bummed out, really sad. It's like you were too late, you blew it. You know here he is, he's dead in there. And um, Jesus knew he was going to go in there and raise him from the dead. But even before he went in there, he still wept, he still cried, he still felt the, the grief. Yet he knew the truth. So death is somewhat different than birth, right? Or, no? it, we've we've let's put it this way we've made it different. We've made it different than life, <laughs> you know. And again, it's the mental constructs. How are we viewing this? You know, I can look at one thing and I see it one way. You look at something, you'll see it in another way. I mean, we've got we yeah. know that. That's clear enough. Um, and and we're looking at it from where we're looking at it from. Okay. And if I need to get a little clearer about what reality is, what's really there, then I need to okay. take the risk of letting go of what I think I already know. Okay, yeah, because, so because uh, everything's up for grabs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that gets back to the box, you know, because what I think I know, and, and boy, here you bring right, wrong, everything else into it. Look at the different belief structures around the planet about right, wrong, good, bad. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's like, how do you relate to your wife? Well, in some cultures you do this, and in other cultures you do that, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. How do you relate to God? Well, over here, you blah, 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 blah. And it's like, <clears throat> um, so what's, 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 what beliefs do I have that are getting my so, way? Of, so should we... Um would it be a goal to um, examine all beliefs and see where, where the, what we're doing, what we're believing? And, um, and the other question, should we let go of as many beliefs as we can? <laughs> well, you do have a lot of questions, don't you, <laughs> Ralph? <laughs> I, you know, my, it, it, there's no shoulds or shoulds. All right. You know, <laughs> it, it's what fits for you. Mm. And, and, trusting your sense for yourself of what that is and and so that means you, you know enter in things like feelings you know things like you know what do you feel like Ralph? Well, i feel like a cup of coffee yeah well sure okay and it's like no no it's like can we uh follow our sense senses and you know we talk about intuition as an example um and i've heard over the over time i've heard as many different de uh, descriptions of intuition as uh, descriptions of god i mean it's unlimited you know and it's like 
And some people, they'll, they'll feel it in their gut. Somebody else will feel it in their heart. And somebody else gets his little voice. And somebody so pay else... pay attention to it's whatever what that is for you. Yeah, yeah. We're, there's, there's no magic uh, template that we all need to fit into. Of how to you know, do that, it. That's all defined. You know, you know, again, a little box. No, I, you know, okay. I, I'm not comfortable in a little box. You know, I know particularly you somebody mean. else's box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the question to, to realize you're in someone else's box. Yeah. It's so easy to like think you're like thinking for yourself. Well, I think that the example you were giving about that child uh, earlier here, the one that was living over, yeah, went, went away somewhere for a walk else, and. Yeah. and and we're we're so susceptible, and I think that the word that I use for that is, is as <clears throat> our human condition is so malleable. You know, it's formed by what's around us, and so we were born into this, and our parents have certain uh, concepts of life, ideas. They have certain values, and it's like we're inundated with that. That's molding us. Yeah. And then, then at some point, we might, might start questioning something, uh, some of those. And, and maybe we're starting to remold ourselves. And it may not fit into the old place. And so, um, and so then I, I go wandering off. All you got to do is wander around the world. Then, all wander you got to do. And it's like you go into another culture and it feels different. Yeah, you know, you go, and then you bounce over somewhere else, and it feels different. I think that's why I'm enjoying these talks, and we'll definitely do more if you can. Yeah, because um, you've been in a different culture, the other side, and and so you have a different perspective <laughs> about a lot of stuff. And I've got so many more questions, but I've got to start to wrap this one up. Yeah, for for right now. Um, so I'm going to come back to more questions later, and especially like um, we'll just check in about um all sorts of questions. So. Please put in your questions in the comments, and um, and I'll keep getting my list bigger, and, and we'll get Don back. Because my some of my questions are, when you're on the other side, can you help those of us that are here? And um, is help different than what we think? Like you know, here we want certain things. I, I say this a lot because I have a lot of clients that want certain things, and my job is to help them get certain things. So, so um, so I've got a lot of more questions for Don, and I'd love to hear everybody else's questions. That's a great way to start to like see where Don's been and what he's got and, and what we can do with this information that can help us. And then with everything, like um, you know, I get emails back from people. I got one today of somebody that watched a bunch of my videos and had a, a big improvement in her lungs and the lessening of the congestion in the lungs. And that's what I've noticed is when people are around aspects of whatever this is they can have a change simply because they were hanging around and who knows why that is. So, so I'd love to hear if any of you, everybody that's had um, where you're different after watching Don for the 45 minutes or so, like let us know how life was before and how life was after. It's like if you want to pay attention to what you're noticing throughout the day and, um, and what's different, put it in the, the message and we'll include it for Don and get some feedback of what, we, he thinks this is all about, and, and um, yeah. Anything else you want to say right now, Don, about anything? But, but I'd love to have you back. Hey, oh, hey, the other, well, you know, one thing before I before we go, um, would you be up for people contacting you if they wanted to work with you, or do you work with people, or is there any way I can I and you can give me the contact information and I can put it on um, the YouTube that'll be on for this or the Facebook Live. But um, is that a possibility? Yeah, that's certainly certainly a possibility, and I'm interested in <clears throat> um, developing whatever. I'm in the process of that. I've been trying to um, get some energy into creating a web space, a website. Um, and in the meantime, I do have a Facebook page. It has nothing on it. I haven't done anything with it. It's been sitting there. It doesn't even have a picture on it. In the void is everything, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And... Um, I suppose if somebody, if they could um, um, let you know, and you could, I could, you tell could, you, I could, you could to you. send them an email address or something. 
um, our name, but yeah, that that's all in in process. So. Okay, so so in the meantime, message me, um, Ralph at RalphHavens.com, or um, right here, just leave a message on this page, and and um, with your contact information, or I'll leave you my contact information. If anybody wants to get a hold of Don for right now, um, you could get in for the pre pre before it gets totally <laughs> launched. So. Um, so yeah, let us know and we'll get that over to Don. If you have any specific questions for Don about yourself or anything else, um, let us know. And we'll do some more. I'm sorry to have to cut it off a little bit, but I've got to get back um, and we'll do another one. So anything else you want to say is on this, um, on this one? <laughs> have fun. Have fun. <laughs> wow, that's it. Okay. So, Enjoy so, yourself. So it's so, okay. So let me get the cliff notes. So be as a child. Um, Live life, have fun, and be yourself. Is that <laughs> your cliff notes? I, I like all those. Okay, 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 awesome. Okay, we'll see what else shows up out of this and let us know what you all notice. Okay, um, Ralph Havens, Don Lee, signing off. Thank let's, you, Ralph. You're welcome, man. Yeah. Live life, let's really get out there and live. Okay.